Hi, I'm Justin Patton with the Faculty Development Center, and I'm here today to talk to you about our light board. You can't see it yet, but it's right in front of me. A big pane of glass with little LED lights illuminating whatever I write on this board so that it really pops out from the black background. This is a great virtual online classroom tool. Uh, it's just like a chalkboard, but I can maintain eye contact with my students the entire time. Um, it's good for flipped classrooms as well and pretty much anything that you can think of uh, where you would want to be able to do um, very fine notation or annotation of various things. Great for science, obviously, for math, for schematics, uh, for whatever you can think of. So let's uh, take it for a spin and you can see what you think. This is our light board. Okay, so obviously um, I've got a fair amount of space to work with. Um, and I can do all sorts of things. I can obviously do uh, some math equations if I want. Let's see. I could perhaps do some type of schematic if I wanted to talk about uh, the way a circuit is working. I uh, could just keep filling things up. You know, we could do all sorts of um, graphic type interfacing where we talk about points on a line or perhaps where we talk about uh, the polar patterns of uh, crossed figure eight microphones. I can pretty much just fill this board up with all sorts of uh, information. And um, as you've noticed, I try to kind of leave a space for myself. I could leave the hole right here in the middle. I could leave the hole over here to the side or to the other side. It kind of helps, though, to plan where you're going to write and where you're not going to write. Because eventually, um, if I have space to stand, but I'm standing over here for some reason, it could be a little uh, distracting to the students. Um, although, it's important to note that if I'm wearing a darker color, like this is a brown shirt, I could also be wearing uh, dark blue or dark gray. Uh, I do stand out from the background enough that you don't lose the color of my shirt. However, if I stand in front of what you want to be looking at, I don't wash it out with like uh, a white t-shirt, for example. Uh, nevertheless, it's still a great idea to be able to return to a place where the students feel like they can communicate with you unencumbered from anything that's on the board. Now that's not to say that you can't fill the board entirely full. I've had professors fill it completely up, especially math professors, and then when they wipe it down, uh, they can start all over again. It's not a big deal. Um, however, if you don't have to fill the board up, if you're not needing every square inch, uh, it's a good idea to leave a hole for yourself so that you can return and speak directly to the listener. Speaking of wiping the board down, let's take a look at what that entails. I like to use paper towel and keep it dry at first. If you try to do anything like Windexing this right off the bat, you really streak it up. So we tend to use uh, just a paper towel and we just use a lot of elbow grease to clean this stuff off. This will give you an idea of what type of work is involved if you are planning on filling this thing up six or seven or eight or 10 or 12 times. You gotta wipe it down each time and uh, that's quite a bit of work. It's time and it's effort and I actually had um, a half marathon runner tell me he was winded after about three cleanings of the board. So here's what that looks like. You may be wondering why I need to show you what it looks like to clean the board. Well, if you're using this uh, and you're going to be doing this, it's going to stay in your presentation unless you have an editor and are going to go in and edit all this out. So your students are going to be waiting for you to wipe the board down. So you have to decide whether or not you want to wipe the board down a lot, which means every time that you do it, you get a little winded and you take quite a bit of time in order to clean the board up. There, now we're ready for step two, fill it all up again. So I've thrown a graphic up on the board for us and you can think about this in a couple of different ways. If you think about this as just a graphic from a PowerPoint, this whole window here is the slide. 
and the graphic has been shrunk and put right up here in the corner, top corner of the slide in order to give me the space that I need to write some other notes or to stand in a hole, for instance. You don't want this graphic taking up the entire space because then you've got nowhere to be. Um, so this is a HD video, so you can think about it as kind of like a 1920 by 1080 box. You can set up uh, graphics accordingly and kind of leave yourself some space because what we do, if you've got a white slide and just this graphic here, we chroma key the white out. So the white has to go everywhere, all the way around the entire thing. And if your graphic is, is cropped, when we chroma key it, um, you can actually end up shrinking your amount of workspace. So we've got to make sure that it's nice and big and that your graphic, um, even though the slide is big, the graphic's just up here in the right corner. Um, I'll show you how what it looks like to draw around this thing. I've got it set, by the way, I'm looking up and over the camera at a monitor that lets me see this graphic. And uh, as I do that, you can certainly see that my eyes leave the camera, and I don't want to do that too much because I really want to make this as engaging as possible for the, the viewer. However, it's going to be a requirement if I'm going to uh, annotate this thing. So we'll say, here's the microphone, and we're going to come straight out. This is the primary uh, polar pattern of this microphone. It's listening in front. And we do see that we've got a couple of nodes coming out here, that they're not, they're not huge, but they do exist. And then we're definitely... Uh, rejecting everything back here. We don't want to hear any of this. This is being actively rejected, so we don't hear those sounds. Uh, but really, here's the sound that we're trying to listen for. This is called a hypercardioid. Just an I in there. Hypercardioid polar pattern. And so I was able to know where to write this right here by looking up at my graphic and seeing, okay, my graphic comes down this far. If I want to talk about what it is, I have to come down here someplace. So we are able to uh, annotate these graphics. Of course, if we want to change to the next slide, it's wipe down time again because uh, the next slide, these, all these annotations aren't going to go along with it. So again, we think about how much we want to spend time-wise on wiping the board down versus the content. Um, probably a good idea to consider uh, your best practice video length to be about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You can certainly go longer if it's supposed to be a substitution for a, a class period, uh, but uh, do be thinking about uh, brevity being your friend. So I do want to put a full color photo up here to explain why simpler is better when it comes to your graphics. A full color picture uh, is going to give our um, keying program some trouble. So we usually look for a graphic that is black on white. We key the black, or excuse me, we key the white out and then the black becomes inverted so it's like just white lines floating nice and neatly in space. We'll take a look at that in just a second. But first I want to show you here uh, that we have this fella's shirt is kind of losing itself right around in this area. You can see that it's, it, it's got a white shirt on, but it's actually just disappearing into nothingness. Uh, that's because this is a full color picture and we're trying to key the white background out. Well, there's a lot of white in the picture, so that's going to be a problem. I'll get rid of it here and you can kind of see that he's certainly missing some things right in this area. It's not bad. I mean, we can still annotate the photo, but it is uh, less than perfect. Uh, so I could come up here and say, well, we see he's got uh, a microphone here. He's got a microphone over here. These are his left and right mics. And then he's got a center pair, looks like about right there. And so we can still annotate this, uh, but it does show some of the shortcomings of the fact that the keyer can only take out so much white before you lose content of the photo. Let's look at what I would consider to be a prime example of, of something to use uh, as your graphic. So here we have a very simple graphic and you can see that as I move behind it, uh, it just kind of floats right in front of me. Very easy to make uh, markings on this. Very easy to say, 
that, uh, for instance, this line is, let's say, negative 10 dB, whereas this line may be negative 5 dB. Uh, we can talk about how far off, if this is uh, 0 and over here is 90 degrees, then obviously our 45 is right here. So these are the types of things that, that would be a lot easier, I think, uh, for annotating. And uh, easier to see, uh, easier, just cleaner. It doesn't have the colors that are missing, such as a full color. Um, these are the types of graphics that are just going to be uh, basic black lines on a white background. That's very easy for our software to key the, the white out and just float the, um, the black lines then inverted for us to annotate. So obviously the point of the light board is to put a uh, pen to paper or chalk to board. Um, if there's not a lot of purpose for uh, doing uh, a lot of drawing or writing or annotating, uh, then the light board, uh, the whole point of it kind of falls into question. If you can accomplish the same thing with a voiceover and a PowerPoint capture, uh, the light board probably isn't for you. If you're just going to talk about slides that we're putting up, for instance, but you don't need to actually annotate those slides, uh, then the light board probably is not a good fit. However, the more of writing that you're doing, the better the light board fits the goal. The more drawing that you do, uh, the better the light board will uh, fit what you're trying to accomplish. So we're excited about this thing. It does have a little bit of a learning curve once you go past the straight chalkboard approach. Even the straight chalkboard approach has a little bit of a learning curve for folks that are not uh, accustomed to being in front of a camera, looking at the camera, uh, stepping out from behind obstructions and things like that. But once you start getting into uh, overlaying graphics, and um, having to look at the monitor, much like the, uh, the, the weatherman, and that, that type of thing, it cranks up the learning level, the learning curve a little bit more, um, but still pretty cool, pretty engaging, uh, a way to surprise a lot of students that have not seen a whole lot of online teaching using uh, this approach. We're excited to uh, have folks learn more about it and hope you will give us a call at the Faculty Development Center for a chance to have a meeting and see if your project is a good fit for this.